We all have different motives for riding bikes, don't we? But a big one for me, and hopefully for lots of you watching at home, is fun. And for the last three months, I'll be riding this, the brand new Specialized Turbo Levo SL, to find out if it can put the fun back into my mountain biking, which I think I've lost over the last few years. Now, don't worry, I'm not trying to convince you to buy an e-bike. You can decide for yourself where a bike like this fits in your life. I'm not really gonna review this bike as I normally would. Instead, I'm sharing my experience of riding this bike for the last three months and how it's fit into my life and whether there's space in my life permanently for a bike like this. Now, you might be wondering why I'm riding a mountain bike. My channel is all about road and gravel, and that may be the case, but when I was a teenager in the 90s, an awfully long time ago, it was mountain biking that got me hooked into a sport. But in my 20s and 30s, I got into competition and road racing and events, which is all fantastic at the time. But now I'm in my early 40s and my fitness is declining and I have less time and I'm busy with life and family and work. I wanna find out whether this bike can put a fun back into my mountain biking, which has sadly been lost over the last few years. I love how it just feels like a slightly heavier, normal mountain bike. It's so playful, it's so much fun to ride. I can definitely move it around much more easily than a full fat, heavy weight e-bike. And that definitely, for me, improves the fun factor so much. Oh, it's such a playful bike, so nimble for a heavy bike. Up until now, e-bikes, or e-mountain bikes anyway, haven't really worked for me. And on that Canyon Spectral I rode last year, just found it way too powerful. And even on eco mode, just made riding up any hill so easy and removed the fun. But this Lever SL, I'm currently in trail mode. I tune the trail mode to be less powerful than the default setting give me enough assistance, but still letting me work pretty hard. Actually, you might be able to tell right now, I'm a bit out of breath, and I've got my heart rate monitor on, and it's still ticking along at a good rate. So I'm still getting a workout. I'm still very much in charge. It's not taking away all the, uh, the challenge of riding a bike off-road. And that's why this new breed of lightweight e-mounted bikes, such as the Lever SL, really appeal to me. A less powerful motor, a smaller battery, a lighter overall build than those full fat e-mounted bikes with a Shimano or Bosch motor. So I'm keen to find out whether a lightweight e-mounted bike can make riding bikes, mountain bikes particularly, more fun. The bike handles so well, geometry fantastic, tyres are good, suspension on point. 29 in front, a steering precision rollover, capabilities and a smaller 27.5 rear wheel for more nimble, agile handling. Whoa, it's so good. Apart from how slippery it is. Oh, I almost hit tree. <laughs> oh, you get carried away so easily. Right, let's try a climb. We don't have much power as a full fat e-bike. I'm in turbo, about 55 newton meters of torque. Yeah, it's still gonna work pretty hard. It's not doing all the work for me. It's definitely making it easier than a normal bike, that's for sure. Good use of gears a bit more. So definitely doing a lot of work for me, but I'm still having to put quite a bit in. I can tell by the fact I'm out of breath. Whew. I like that, I like the balance of a good amount of assistance. So you still have to put a lot of effort in, but it definitely helps you out. It's helping me get up climbs. That would be really tough or almost impossible on a normal bike. But yeah, still gonna work out. Best of both worlds. Some people say e-bikes are cheating, but as I show you on that climb, I definitely wasn't cheating. 
yes, it was easier than a regular mountain bike, but I was still putting a lot of effort in and my heart rate was definitely elevated and I was still catching my breath now. So I had to put a lot of effort in, but now I've got a bit more energy reserve left for heading down again and repeat that a few times and therefore have a lot more fun. Um, more fun than a regular mountain bike because I'll still be laboring up the climb right now. But I'm gonna head down, do a few more descents while the weather is good, the rain is forecast, as the fingers cross it stays dry. Some sunshine would be lovely because the trails are so, so muddy right now. We've had a, a terrible wet uh, winter heading to spring now. I'm fed up with the mud, but I mustn't complain and mustn't grumble. e mountain bike definitely helps cut through the mud, keep you smiling, keeps you having a, a good time. So, am I having less fun on an e mountain bike? Well, let me show you. Now, of course, technically speaking, this is an e-bike. It assists you when you're pedaling and basically doubles your power. But in a way, it's not really an e-bike, it's sort of a mountain bike plus. It's not giving you all the power and range of a full fat, full size e-bike, just helping out a bit. So I think seeing it as an enhanced mountain bike makes more sense than lumping in with all the other e-bikes out there. It's not so powerful that on a road climb in turbo, I can't hit 25k an hour, spinning like a madman. Whereas a full fat e-mountain bike, I can sit at 25k an hour, easy. All right, now I'm doing 16. I also like the fact you don't hit like a buffer, a wall, when you hit that 25 kilometer per hour, or 15 mile an hour uh, limit for assistance. You breeze straight through it, almost without noticing really. Seamless, natural, feels good. This new Levo SL is an impressive bit of kit, but it's definitely not cheap. This is the entry level model, which costs 7,000 pounds here in the UK. But you do get a full carbon fiber frame, you get the brand new motor, which is more powerful and more efficient than the old one with a battery in the down tube. And there are a lot of details on it I really like, which I found living on the bike uh, a really nice experience. The control unit on the top tube with a handlebar remote for going through different modes, there are three modes up to turbo, makes it really easy to customize the bike and see how much range you have left and how far you'll be riding and your speed. And it's a really high quality display as well. The clarity on that is fantastic. And then the app on the smartphone makes customizing the different power modes really easy as well. And I found the stock default settings work well, but I've actually tuned the eco and the trail mode to be a bit closer and have that turbo mode as a sort of occasional climbing assistance and spend most of my time in a trail mode which I've tuned to be a bit less powerful than a default setting but you can customize that to the way you ride and your fitness levels and the riding terrain you have on your doorstep so I like that customization of the the way the motor works and you really extend the battery as well you can buy a range extending battery to go in the bottle cage to increase the range of the bike but then you lose your bottle mount uh, so you have to use a hydration pack for keeping hydrated on a long ride. But for my local trails here in the southwest of the UK, that main battery has been just fine. I can get two to three hours of riding by using eco and trail mode and occasionally uh, treating myself to turbo on some of the bigger climbs. The bike is well specced for the money as well. It's not a fancy kit, but durable and reliable. High quality specialized tires which work well in mixed conditions, their own wheels, SRAM group set as well, and a nice handlebar and stem. You get a dropper seat post, and I love the SWAT tool storage in the steering tube. And I can't see any reason to buy a high end model. You get the same motor and battery and frame higher up the range, you just get fancier kit, posher wheels and equipment 
Um, the frame is UDH compatible, so you can fit a transmission rear make if you want and go electronic, but the cable works, uh, works really well. Okay, time to wrap up my thoughts of riding this bike for the last three months. Hopefully giving you a bit of an insight into where I'm at, what I'm thinking about with these bikes and how they can fit into my life. And hopefully you can relate to some of what I'm talking about in the video. But let me know, leave a comment down below. So as per the thumbnail, am I buying this bike? Well, to be honest, even riding it for the last three months and being so impressed with how it rides and the performance and capabilities, I'm still undecided. If I had unlimited funds and space, yes, in a heartbeat, I would buy this bike. It's the best e-mountain bike I've yet ridden, but there are quite a few interesting, enticing, lightweight e-mountain bikes coming to market right now. So definitely an interesting period to jump onto an e-mountain bike, especially if it's your first experience of owning one, uh, like it could be for me. But part of me can't get away from the appeal of riding a non-assisted, non-motorized mountain bike. I think in a perfect world, I'd have two bikes. I'd have this and a lightweight, short travel XC race bike for times when I wanna go out and absolutely hammer myself full beast mode and get a really good workout. I'm not sure about having this as my only mountain bike. I might miss those times when I want a, a normal mountain bike for really pushing myself hard and getting that fitness benefits. That challenge you get from a normal mountain bike would be something I would miss. So ideally, I need two bikes, but that's really expensive to buy two mountain bikes and have an e-bike and a, a short travel one. So it's a conundrum. So I'm not really sure yet. I haven't really, I've got much further in my decision making. It is clear from riding this Lever SL that a lightweight e-mountain bike makes a lot more sense for me for the riding I do and my fitness levels than a full fat E mountain bike. It's much more fun to ride, uh, much more challenging. I still get a workout, my heart rate still goes high, so I'm not cheating myself and still getting a good workout, but having the benefits of that motor and being able to ride further or ride faster in a shorter amount of time and get more runs down a hill than I normally would on a normal mountain bike. And because I ride bikes all the time, every day, road and gravel, always filming. I'm always tired, so having a bike which doesn't require full fitness levels um, is quite nice as well. And I'm impressed with what Specialized have done here. Um, great technology, great incorporation of the motor and the battery and interface all worked so well. So as a product, absolutely massive thumbs up, uh, apart from the price, which is quite punchy, but there is now an alloy version of this bike just released since I made a video a few days ago. Yeah, interesting times. Um, let me know what you think of e-mounted bikes and lightweight e-mounted bikes and having one in your life, in your garage. Does it fit for you? Does it work for you? Love to hear your thoughts as always. And hopefully you can help me out by answering my question by leaving a comment down below. Big thanks to Specialized for lending me this bike for the last few months um, to really experience what having an e-mounted bike is like in your life. And nice to ride a bike uh, for longer than I normally do a test bike here at Just Ride Bikes. Anyway, that's enough waffling for now. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right there. And if you want to see a video of that Canyon Spectral that I rode off a mountain in Wales, then watch this video linked up here. But that's all today. I'm gonna head home by some more cheeky mountain bike trails. I'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, my tip tree. <laughs> oh, you get carried away so easily. <laughs> <laughs>